This sentiment may be the main reason why we're in this predicament in the first place. Greetings, and welcome back to Here's What I Heard. I'm Laura Degatis, your hostess. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Don't forget, every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Central Time, the Talk To Me America show where the world wants to know what you have to say. So call me and tell them like it is. Also, please support the channel by liking, subscribing, commenting, sharing, and of course, a donation would be the ultimate. All of my links are below. Click on some of them, will ya? In this week's video, I'm going to highlight a letter from an actual representative from Michigan after the MSU shooting, who not only goes against the Second Amendment, uh, but also officially portrays the attitude that has gotten us to this point of needing to even think about gun control in the first place. Michigan House of Representatives Ranjeev Puri, State Representative, February 14th, 2023, Valentine's Day of all days. House Majority Whip Ranjeev Paris' full statement on the Michigan State University shooting. The very first sentence, fuck your thoughts and prayers. This comment right here is the very reason that we are in this predicament. Without prayer, folks get all up in themselves and do shit like this repeat offender, criminal, did to these college kids. And I don't know why anyone would turn down a wisher or hoper of wellness for their fellow man. They know that they can't do much else about this, don't they? I mean, we're sorry for what happened to you, but we didn't do it or perpetrate it. I would venture to say that those who do pray, like myself, have already prayed to try to prevent a situation like this before it even happened. However, we don't have any control over our fellow human beings. I mean, what does he want folks to do? Point, laugh, and tell these people how much they deserve this? I'm going to read the rest of the letter, but we'll get back to this first sentiment. I want to extend my deepest condolences to the Michigan State University community who are experiencing unimaginable trauma and grief after a shooter opened fire at multiple locations across Michigan State's campus. Okay, so his first comment is what you heard me say earlier, but he still wants to extend his deepest condolences, which by his logic still does absolutely nothing. In fact, it does less than nothing because there's no deity there. It's just him wishing them condolences, which does, again, nothing. So he starts out by being a hypocrite. <clears throat> what happened in East Lansing is unfortunately too far too common. Going to school in America, whether it's preschool or college, means risking your life every day to the threat of mass shooting. Um, that's anywhere that you go. The only reason why they risk their lives more in schools is because they've made them gun-free zones. They're soft targets for these people that are outlaws. Yet all we have offered up are empty solutions. I agree, you have. Traumatizing active shooter drills and bulletproof backpacks. Well, that's better than nothing. Not to mention the fact you want to just let these people just mill around unconscious, thinking that nothing will ever happen to them. I would rather be prepared for this kind of stuff because people are unpredictable, especially right now. We do not need to live like this. The United States is the only country where this happens. That's bullshit where mass shootings have left us desensitized, waking up each day to a seemingly never-ending horrific cycle of gun violence. The world is full of violence no matter what you do. You wake up every morning and you might not make it to bed the next night. That's just life. And is it wrong? No, that's what happens. It's the cycle of life. It's unfortunate that people have to die sooner than they should because of these killers, but you don't know what the deal is there. Living in a society plagued with gun violence can be prevented. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. 
It is a symptom of years of inaction. I agree on that too, although I actually disagree. It's not inaction. You guys have been in all inaction, letting criminals out with no bail and uh, letting them out and having a rap sheet 17, 18, 19 uh, uh, indications long. So yeah, I, I, it's not the inaction. It's the actions of what you guys have been doing. We can't do anything about these criminals except protect ourselves against them. Because God knows you're not. We are not even two full months into 2023, and this marks the 67th mass shooting of the year. Actually, there are some publications saying 71, but who's counting, right? Along with over 2,215 mass shooting gun deaths. Um, I don't know where he gets his stats on here. He was wrong about the mass shooting. Um, not to mention the fact that if he's getting his information where I think he's getting it from, it's, some, it's a place that actually doesn't di differentiate between legal and illegal gun problems. So, yeah, there's, it's, it's, there's more of a nuance here than just what he's saying. Of course, he's trying to scare the shit out of everybody with this large number. In fact, I read where uh, several of them were, were uh, a man who killed his family and then killed himself. I wouldn't call that a mass shooting. I would call that murder-suicide. And there's got to be a reason behind that, too. Thoughts and prayers without action and change are meaningless. No, they're not. Actually, to be honest with you, if these people were actually doing more praying, they probably wouldn't be out shooting people up. Our office will continue to work tirelessly to pass common sense gun reform immediately. No, you won't. No, you won't. We will, we will not stop until our students can attend school without fear, our communities can attend places of worship in peace, and our society is safe from senseless gun violence. You know, like I say, the only way that's going to happen is if you start taking the guns away from the criminals and allowing people to defend themselves in this aspect. For the most up-to-date and accurate updates related to the Michigan State University shooting, please follow the Michigan State University police. Oh, as if they did any good. It is important that we allow law enforcement to do their jobs as more details are released and a full assessment is provided. Right. The cops are going to do a lot more stuff because what are we doing with them? Um, uh, defunding them? In fact, didn't Governor Whitmer just defund them yet again? Right after this? Yeah, tell me another one, Ranjeev. Now, the 2A thing is very important, but they have been talking like this for years. And I don't see them actually doing anything just yet. In my opinion, there are way, way, way too many people still that would fight back uh, against it or become outlaws when they do supposedly ban these guns. Besides, with shit like this happening, we see gun sales soar. Because folks can actually see that no government or cop is able to protect them from such events. But, also, with so many events like this having been thwarted by someone who clings to their gun rights, they've statistically been shown to save more lives than cops or EMTs, and also more lives than have been taken by these lunatics. With a quick Google search, I was actually able to find a comprehensive list from 2022, the middle of 2022, from Newsweek of all places. Uh, John R. Lott, it's actually an opinion piece, but he lists a whole plethora of, of good guys thwarting bad guys with guns. And usually the bad guys, what they mean by that is these people are not allowed to have guns. We find out later on that none of these people that did any of this were really allowed to have guns, or a majority of them. I think there was two out of the, out of all of the ones that actually had uh, guns. And again, I think those were the ones that did the family murder suicide. A twenty-two a twenty-two year old legally carrying man fatally shot an attacker at an Indianapolis shopping mall. And of course, these people they don't. A lot of them they seem to not really have any goal other than to just shoot into a crowd and see what happens. Uh, he goes on, another recent case that attracted national attention was in Charleston, West Virginia on May 25th, where a man with an extensive criminal history started firing into a crowd. Why was he doing that? Do they ever find out why these people just start randomly shooting into crowds? 
Do they hate humanity that much? On December 29th, here's another one. On December 29th, 2019, a concealed handgun permit holder named Jack Wilson stopped an attack at a church just outside Fort Worth, Texas. And I remember that. I remember when it happened. In fact, it was really weird. I saw the news like right after I got out of church. Here's another one that he lists in July of 22, 22nd of 2022. Fort Myers, Florida. A convicted felon who illegally possessed a gun fired multiple shots into a crowd before a bystander returned fire. When the bystander confronted the attacker, he stopped attacking and threw his gun in a parking lot. Fortunately, no one was injured in the attack. But again, some rando decides to point a gun into a crowd of people. Why? Why would he do that? The next one, like I say, he's got a pretty comprehensive uh, list of things here. South Fulton, Georgia, May 3rd, 2022. A teenager fired his gun at multiple, pe multiple people attending a Stop the Violence rally. Now, what moron wouldn't want to stop the violence? Here's some people that are actually trying to do something about this. And yet you have someone that would come in with a gun and try to shoot them all down. Shoot into their, you know, try and hurt whoever it is within the crowd. I, this isn't a gun problem. This is a person problem. What is this person doing out on the streets and are they still? A teenager, and of course, teenagers these days don't know any better, or they do actually. It's pretty much all they know. Syracuse, New York, August 31st, 2021. The district attorney credited a property uh, manager with saving the lives of several individuals after he pulled a legally possessed 9mm and fatally wounded a man who opened fire on a crowd outside a building. Another one! These people see a crowd and all of a sudden they th the first thing they think is, let me go get my gun and start shooting into it. What is this? What is that? Okay? It's definitely not what that representative said. And nobody that, that offers condolences or thoughts or prayers wants any of this stuff to happen. In fact, the, for the very reason why we're wishing them well in the first place, because this is happening. Fort Smith, Arkansas, May 15th, 2021. Zachary Arnold, 26, fatally shot Lois Hicks, 87, in her apartment and then began shooting at other people in the neighboring apartments. The attacker fired 93 rounds. Wallace A. West, 57, used a gun to stop the attack. Mr. Wen Mr. West acted lawfully when he shot Mr. Arnold and likely saved a number of lives in the process. After 93 rounds. In fact, that, see, that, that tells me he was hesitant to do anything in the first place. He was originally, supposedly, it sounds like, waiting for the cops. Brownsburg, Indiana, July 14, 2020. Joshua Christopher Hayes started shooting at men working in the local cemetery in the afternoon. A passing motorist got out of his car and returned fire. This tragic event could have been much more disastrous. So victim three not only saved the victim two's life, but he saved potentially the lives of others. These people are just shooting willy-nilly. What is the first thing they tell you during New Year's and things like that? Don't shoot up into the air. You don't know where it's going to come down. These people don't care. They have illegal guns. They don't care. They're not going to follow any more laws. Start holding these people responsible that are doing this stuff. Stop letting them out of jail. Stop feeling sorry for them. I mean, God only knows what you're doing to the poor victims who's lost these people. You're so worried about these people that are getting lost, but you keep letting the criminals out? Just doesn't make any sense. Plus, you and I both know these leaders never solve problems. They never do. In fact, if, it, if this gets any worse, they can just keep promising harder and harder to fix it while getting their votes and then continuing to do nothing while fundraising and continuing to get elected on their bogus promises to fix it for us. They've been doing it for 60 years. It's most politicians only mantra these days. It really is. And I, and I can't believe we haven't gotten ahead of them and remember what they always lie about. But yet here we are still Yet you got leaders that will take yours away and then say this. So 
So back to the first sentiment and the first amendment, which is what my channel is all about, which is really the problem and another reason why we need to heed our t second amendment now and in the future. But you know why I think people have actually stopped praying? Because people like the one who wrote this letter officially saying things like this. They have convinced people that no one is actually listening to your prayers and that God is an imaginary person in the sky. And instead of believers and folks continuing to follow what God says about prayer, they start to believe what their so-called representatives say, and depending upon uh, more of mankind's version of what is right and virtuous. And here we are dealing with pure evil intentions, acts, and laws. Which in my opinion should make folks want to pray even more. No atheists in the foxhole. Besides, atheism wouldn't exist if there were not actually a being of God. It seems that at one point somewhere around in 1962 in the court, in the court case of Engel versus Vitali, the United States Supreme Court ruled that based on the establishment clause in the First Amendment that the government can't sponsor a prayer and require school children to say it. Seems there was a school in Hyde Park, New York that directed their school districts to recite the following prayer on a daily basis. It read, Almighty God, we acknowledge our dependence upon thee, and we beg thy blessings upon us, our parents, our teachers, and our country. It only took 10 parents out of the entire school district, uh, out of thousands of others uh, that were not bothered by this, to sue and shut that down. And when all they had to do was just not say it. You know, no, nobody was forcing them to say it. It was something they wanted to say. But yeah, 10. 10 people ruined it for the rest of the people. And then, of course, when you do that, people just start falling and falling and falling. And this is what we've seen since 1962. Now, there's no actual law against prayer in school, but it has been discouraged so much. And people have been fighting it so much. In fact, we're still fighting it to this day. The argument, and let me read you some of the arguments from both sides of this. This is from All About History. Pros and cons of prayer in school. Question. What are the pros and cons of prayer in school? Answer. Below, you will see the pros and cons of prayer in school. To those who favor the return of prayer to public schools argue. The United States Supreme Court has replaced freedom of religion guaranteed by the Constitution for freedom from religion. To ban school prayer diminishes the religious freedoms of students who would like to pray and forces them to act according to the dictates of a non-religious minority. And this isn't and the thing is is what they don't tell you is it's only for Christians. If Muslims or anybody else, Buddhists or anybody else wanted to pray in school, they would make accommodations for them. And that's weird because Christians don't really require anything extra to be able to pray. It's just them and them bowing their heads. Sometimes they don't even have to do that. The U.S. Supreme Court has misinterpreted the Establishment Clause of the Constitution. A simple and voluntary school prayer does not amount to the government establishing a, a religion any more than do other practices common in the United States, such as the employment of congressional chaplains or government recognition of holidays with religious significance and national days of prayer. And they're not wrong. Even, even most people that get sworn in put their hand on some religious icon, usually the Christian Bible. School prayer would result in many societal benefits. The public school system is tragically disintegrating as is evidenced by the rise in school shootings, increasing drug use, alcoholism, teen pregnancy, and HIV transmission. School prayer can help combat these issues, will it, would instill a sense of morality, and is desperately needed to protect our children. At least give them the option. Teach them, you know, teach them all the religions. Don't just teach them one. Teach them all the religions in that case, as many as you can think of, and then let them decide. I mean, even Jesus and even God said it's up to you. You have to seek him. He's not going to come after you. It's up to you. He told you he's within you. He's always within you. But if you deny him and you go and do these other things and everything like that, it's not like he's going to come and strike you with lightning or anything like that. You make the choice. So the best thing in this case would be to teach all kinds of religions. Be respectful of all of them. Unless it pertains to sacrificing people. I, we, we do have to uh, uh, draw a line somewhere. We don't want a bunch of dead kids because somebody decided to 
<laughs> somebody decided to sacrifice virgins to Satan, but, or whomever. School prayer would address the needs of the whole person. School must do more than train children's minds academically. They're actually not even doing that now. So, school prayer would be a definite, uh, and it doesn't even have to actually be prayer. You can call it uh, uh, meditation. It basically is you spending a few minutes on your own, by yourself, reflecting, asking, seeking. And it's usually you do this because you're actually going within yourself. You're looking within yourself. A lot of kids don't do that, and that's why they're not responsible for anything, and they just go out and do things willy-nilly, like seeing a crowd and deciding to shoot on up. School prayer would allow religious students an opportunity to observe their religious beliefs during the school day. The United States Supreme Court has urged school cooperation with religious authorities for it then respects the religious nature of our people and accommodates the public service to their spiritual needs. Again, it doesn't even take anything. Why are they so worried about somebody bowing their head and closing their eyes and being quiet for a few minutes? It may actually even be the difference between someone getting upset and causing a problem and calming themselves down and not. All right, so here's the frequently heard arguments against prayer in school. School prayers violates the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment, which provides that government shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion. Because public schools are government-funded, prayer led by school officials or incorporated into the school routine amounts to government-established religion. I don't remember anybody asking for anybody to lead it. But if these kids want a class, and if they vote for some kind of a class or something like that, I don't see why they should reject it. I mean, it is up to the kids. We are the government. The people are supposed to be governing themselves in this, in this aspect. You know, uh, if they voted to have something for Muslim, or if they voted to have something for Buddhist, or if they voted to have something for Satanist, which they actually are doing, they're making special accommodations for those religions. Prayer, school prayer violates the separation of church and state. No, it doesn't. Public school or not, these people are still individuals. Our, our students and our children are still individuals. They should be able to do as they please. If they're forcing it on somebody else, yeah, I could say, do something about that. Yeah, look, you can't, you can't be doing that. You know, don't be forcing. But if they're just talking about it or, or anything like that, it's okay. So I say, everyone else is allowed to do it. Public schools are intended for edu education, not religious observant, observance or proselytization. Again, I don't see anybody proselytizing to anyone. They are praying. They are praying and exercising their own personal freedom of religion. Prayer and, prayer and these people, and, and you notice how... Uh, short and sweet that these answers for for it against it are it's like just do as he say just do as we say it's because of this 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 and this the other things were there was thought put into them and there was explanations behind them but these people these are uh, the, the people for that are against it the people that are against it are literally saying do as we say or else essentially and of course, the, 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 this is rich. Public schools are intended for education, not religious observance or proselytization. So what is all this pronoun crap? What is all this other stuff the grooming these kids for this stuff? That's not education. Prayer is school. Prayer in school is already legal, and it is. Students are already allowed to pray on a voluntary basis basis in a non-destructive way, so formal school prayer is unnecessary. Okay. I don't understand why they're making I don't understand why they're making it a deal because nobody's forced anybody to do it. There was this one court case, they overruled it. Now all of a sudden, like I say, we're still fighting for this and it's not it's it's a it's almost a non-issue. They 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 claim it right here in a non-destructive way. Like I said, I don't understand how it would be destructive destructive for someone to bow their ha bow their heads and be silent for a few minutes. 
School prayer may lead to intolerance. May. May lead to intolerance. And again, that's, they don't know that. They don't know that. It actually may be the difference between somebody not wailing on someone else also. You calm yourself down. You pray. Give me strength. If someone's beating on you, if someone's messing with you, if someone's screwing with you, it might be the difference between that. This this bullshit of intolerance? No. Prayer's not going to lead to intolerance. Public prayer will highlight religious differences of which students may have been unaware. So what? That's up to them. If they have a problem with it, then they're the one with the problem, not the person praying. Those students who abstain from school prayer may be ostracized. By who? If these people are busy praying, they're not ostracizing anybody. If anything, it's going to be the other way around. And it has been. School prayer is inherently coercive and cannot be implemented in a way that is truly voluntary. That's not true. That is not true. Every other activity except for the basics in those, in those schools is voluntary. What do you think that uh, electives are? They're voluntary. So yeah, if somebody wants to and chooses to go to a class that they want to pray for and everything like that, they should be allowed to. They should be allowed to. It's not up to you. And the fact that you, you bring, up, bring up all this stuff that could happen. Let it happen and see if that's the case. You basically have foreshadowed and, and told the future when you don't know what it is. The public school system is created for all students as supported by all taxpayers. It should therefore remain neutral on religious issues over which students and taxpayers will differ. I agree, but they're not doing that. They're basically doing what they want to do while excluding Christians. By all this other flabbergast, oh, it may be controversial and it may be uh, uh, divisive and it may be this and it may be that. Well, aren't the other students that aren't interested in that, don't they have their own groups, their own cliques? Aren't they somewhat divisive as far as that goes, but it's only on Christians? Since no formal school prayer could honor the tenets of all the religions practiced in the United States, as well as various denominational differences, prayer is better left in the home and religious institution of the individual student's choice. A related argument is that school prayer usurps the role of parents and religious institutions who desire to provide instruction in keeping with their own beliefs. Again, everyone should learn everyone else's. If you're gonna have everybody in there what is you know what happened to the equal treatment everybody should learn about everyone else's that's actually what brings people together that's actually what creates the understanding you need in order to stop these mass shootings these people that just go up and see a crowd of somebody that they may or may not agree or disagree with because they don't really know and just go up there and start shooting bullets into it but you got people that tell that 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 give you all these straw man arguments as to whether what you know what's going to happen, and they don't pray. Do they practice any of this stuff? They don't know. They're not going to know. Not to mention the fact that religion is way different from God. They always conflate the two. Religion is not God. God is not religion. Personally, I believe that if you wish to pray in order to seek your God, and especially as a part of your religion, no matter where you are, especially in the United States, you should. And you should be able to. It is literally one of our instructions from God to pray without ceasing, and it is protected by our Constitution. Don't forget, there are literally folks being executed in other nations for praying to any other God than their government and their leaders. So please, don't be so willing to give something as simple as that away so easily. Not only is it the right thing to do, according to mine and many others' beliefs, but it's a kind of a good way to remain and be ungovernable to those who would try to take those rights away from you. Meaning, 
that since the First Amendment says that government shall make no law above the freedom of your religion, you are actually following the true law of the land, not just some talking head that we probably didn't actually vote into office to begin with. But, like any other written law, it's only as good as the paper it's written on unless we enforce it by continuing to pray, even though most of mankind and Satan does not want you to, you will enforce that freedom in which God has actually granted everyone. No man, woman, or child could ever afford you that, nor take it away from you. Not even this representative that says otherwise, or would have you do otherwise. Besides, you never know. By your example, you might just be bringing some lost soul to try and pray as well. And that really is all God wants us to do, is bring people to him. He'll do the rest. And by example is the best way he, that he really wants you to do it as well. So, besides, if that weed, that weed cult in Miami Beach, the Zion Coptic Church, if they could do it, us Christians can do it too. And we actually have higher authority. So no, Ranjeev, I won't stop with my thoughts and prayers as I'm commanded by a higher power than yourself to do so. And I think I'll stick with him. I do hope you enjoyed my video today. Thank you so much again for being here. Please don't forget every Thursday night, 7 p.m. Central, the Talk To Me America show, where the world wants to know what you have to say. So call me and tell them like it is. This is a show for you to exercise your First Amendment rights. So like I say, call me on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Central Time and tell them like it is. Also, please support the channel by liking, subscribing, commenting, and sharing. A donation would be the ultimate, and all my links are below. Click on some of them, will ya? Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Until next time. AMF.